Give him glory, give him honor. Give him adoration, bless. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Bless the ancient of days, give him glory. Worship him. He's the Almighty God. Jehovah El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. Praise his holy name. Give him glory, give him honor. Worship him. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. What a mighty God. We sir, Alleluia. God, we serve. Heaven and earth adore Him. Angels bow before Him. What a mighty God. What a mighty God! What a mighty God! We serve. What a mighty God! We serve. Heaven and earth adore. Serving him, what a mighty God we serve! What a mighty God we serve! Heaven and earth adore him, angels bow before. Ancient of days, we worship you. The Holy One of Israel, we adore you. The I am that I am, the unchangeable changer, we give you all the glory. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for January. Thank you for February. Thank you for March. Thank you for April. Thank you for May. And Lord, thank you for June. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight, in a very, very special way, send down your fire. Everyone here and all those who are connected with this service all over the world, tonight give us a taste of your fire. At the end of it all, let your name be glorified. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah by fire. Well, then shake up with one or two people and prophesy to them. You will taste the fire of God tonight. And then you may please be seated. Except those who are born, those who are born in the month of June. If you are born in the month of June, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> my Father, my God, I commit your children born in the month of June into your hands. In the way only you can do, bless them. Bless them beyond their widest imagination. Strengthen them. Support them. Protect them. Overshadow them. And from now on, in every area of their lives, Lord, let there be something new happening. Every day, let them have beautiful testimonies. And let them serve you like never before. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, children of June, shout another hallelujah. Many happy returns in Jesus' name. You may please be seated. Um, before we go to the message of the people who spoke to us tonight, let me remind you that, um, or inform you that the July Holy Ghost service, the theme is going to be Refuel your fire. Refuel your fire. And it's going to be during the Disciples' Convention. The Disciples' Convention is going to be in the first week of July as usual. Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4 verse 20 uh, many of them quoted it again and again but that's going to be my own text also Exodus chapter 4 verse 20 <coughs> And Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon an ass and they returned to the land of Egypt and Moses took the rod of God in his hands. Now, just for your information, I'm sure you know we are discussing from the mountain top and this is part five. What is a rod of fire? Simple. The rod of God. Exodus 4.20 Moses took the rod of God in his hand. And because 
according to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29, like many of my children pointed out, our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews 12, 29. And because the rod we are talking about is the rod of God, is the rod of the consuming fire, therefore it is the rod of fire. But that's in the hand of Moses. When you go further into the scriptures, you will find another rod of fire, like we discussed at the Holy Communion service yesterday, and that will be the mantle of Elijah. Because Elijah, like I told you yesterday, those of you who are at the Holy Communion, is a classical example of a fireman of God, a fire carrier of God. Because in 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 35 to 39, 1 Kings 18, from verse 35 to 39, he prayed for about two minutes, and fire came down from heaven. In 2 Kings chapter 1, 2 Kings chapter 1, from verse 9 to 12. 2 Kings 1, 9 to 12. Two times in a single day, he commanded fire to come down from heaven, and fire came. It's a man who prays, and fire fell. It's a man who, who command and fire will fall. And he had something peculiar to him, his mantle. You will remember very well that when he was about to leave, and he asked Elisha, what do you want? And Elisha said, I want a double portion of your spirit. What he handed over or dropped for Elisha to pick up was his mantle. When you move into the New Testament, you will find that the rod of fire is a name. And that name is Jesus. Isaiah chapter 11 from verse 1 to 5. Isaiah 11 from verse 1 to 5 tells us that out of Jesse will come a rod. And according to Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 to 12, Matthew 3 verse 11 to 12, the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is the one who baptizes with fire. And just like uh, one of or two or three of them have said, they quoted Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8. Acts 1, verse 8. Just like Elijah dropped the mantle for Elisha after he departed, Jesus Christ said that after he has gone, he will send down power. I will drop my mantle on you. And that mantle, of course, is the Holy Spirit. So, the rod in the hand of Moses was a shepherd rod that became the rod of God. In the case of Elijah versus Elisha, it was a mantle. In the case of you and I, it is the Holy Spirit dropped for us by Jesus Christ. Now, what can the rod do? My children spoke about several things, about what you can expect from the rod. And let me just add a few things. Number one. According to Exodus chapter 7, 
from verse 10 to 12. Exodus 7 from verse 10 to 12. When Moses dropped his rod in the palace of Pharaoh, it became a serpent. The magicians of Pharaoh also dropped their own rods, and their own rods also became serpents. But one thing followed the rod of Moses swallowed the rods of the magicians. The serpent that came from the rod of Moses swallowed the serpents that came from the rods of the magicians. And then when Moses picked it up, it became a rod again. The first thing the rod would do for you is to swallow the rods of your enemies. In 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 8 to 23, 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 8 to 23, because Elisha had the mantle of Elijah, when a king sent an army to go and arrest him, a whole army, Elisha arrested the army. The mantle enabled him to arrest the arresters. And he took them to enemy territory, opened their eyes, got them fed, and just like uh, the last speaker said, he returned them to sender. In the name that's above every other name, all the enemies that have been sent to arrest you, you will arrest them. You will return them to sender. And they will never return. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, from verse 1 to the end, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, from verse 1 to the end, there was a king that was determined to stop the work of God. He got one of the apostles, killed him, and then decided to big progress, he grabbed Peter and was going to kill Peter, but Peter was rescued. But by the end of the story, you discover that this fellow who was raising himself up as the enemy of the church was eaten by worms. And the Bible says after he died, the work of God prospered. So I have good news for you. Anyone who has been waging war against you, trying to stop the work of God through you, very soon the ground is going to swallow them up. You may want to write down your prayer number one. Prayer number one. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let every plan against me be consumed by fire tonight. So the first thing, oh, you want me to repeat? Okay. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let every plan against me be consumed by fire. Hmm. Maybe you want to add tonight. The second thing that... Thank you, Father. 
The Lord asked me to tell somebody, he said, your set time of favor has come. Believe me honestly, I want to say amen to that too. Number two, the rod of fire can make a way where there is no way. Exodus 14, from verse 13 to 22. Exodus 14, from verse 13 to 22. You know the story very well. The Egyptians began to pursue the children of Israel. They met them by the Red Sea. And they, they were afraid. And which is good news for somebody here today. Everything that is frightening you up to now, the fire of God will consume tonight. And by the time Moses stretched forth his hand across the Red Sea, there came a way where there was no way before. In 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 13 to 15, 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 13 to 15, when Elisha picked up the mantle that fell from Elijah, he went to River Jordan and smote the River Jordan with the same mantle that he picked up from his master. And the Bible tells us that Jordan opened unto him. I'm sure I've mentioned it to you before. Here was Elisha. He has received the mantle. He was about to begin his ministry but between him and the land where he was going to minister was river jordan with that mantle a way was opened for him to cross over to his destiny i pray for someone here today that after tonight you enter into your destiny And then when you move into the New Testament, you find that in John chapter 14, verse 6, John 14, verse 6, Jesus will not just show you a way, he will tell you, I am the way. But when you read John 11, from verse 39 to 44, John 11, 39 to 44, you will discover that in the case of the Lord Jesus Christ, he produced a way when everybody thought there was absolutely no way. At a time when Lazarus was not just dead, but buried, rotting, stinking, the rod of Jesse stood by the tomb and call Lazarus to come forth. Remember when he said, Lazarus, come forth. Several things were to happen at that moment. Lazarus was already dead. His flesh was already rotting. Worms were already consuming the rotting flesh. The blood had changed to blackish water. So when the rod of Jesus spoke, number one, everything that the worms had consumed, they vomited. So everything the devil has taken from you, you are going to get back.
the blood that had changed to black water became blood again. So tonight God is going to reverse the irreversible for you. And not only did Lazarus got up, the very sickness that killed him was also completely dismissed. I am standing on the authority of the word of God to tell you the healings that you get tonight will be permanent. And then somebody said that if Jesus Christ had not mentioned Lazarus, if instead of saying Lazarus come forth, if he had stood before the tomb and said, come forth, everyone that had died before man was born would have come out of the tomb. But it was specific. He mentioned Lazarus. So tonight God is going to be specific. He's going to mention the name of somebody. He's going to say, Adeboye, come forth. If you are the one he's going to mention, shout hallelujah. I've shared this story with you before. 1981, I was visiting my town for the first time as general overseer. The town came out to receive me. And then, when the Oba was going to make a speech, he made a request. My town is somewhere in between Ife and Elisha. From Elisha to Ifewara was a distance of 13 miles, they call it then, but that's about 20 kilometers. The distance between my town and Ife was eight kilometers. But there was no road between Ife and Ifewara. So if you want to go to Ife from Ifewara, you have to go to Elisha, 20 kilometers, and then travel about another 32 kilometers to get to Ife. And my people say, you see, we, we, we do this Israelite journey. We wish that there be a road connecting us to Ife. Well, I did the only thing I could do. I said, show me the direction you want the road. And they showed me the direction. And I lifted my right hand, pointed in that direction and cried unto my God, Father, let there be a way. Six months later, and I'm talking of 1981, at a time when nobody knew me at all, somebody woke up in Abuja and said, ah, there's a road here it's a federal road, though it is small. To cut a long story short, I raised my hand in the direction that I said that the people said they wanted the road. And within six months, work began. Tonight, I'm raising my hand to all of you who are here and all of you who are connecting to us throughout the world. From today onward, there will be a way for you. Yeah. 
You may want to write your prayer number two. Prayer number two. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, every obstruction on my way, clear by fire. Every obstruction on my way, clear by fire. It's all thing that the rod of fire can do is that you can close the door against your pursuers. One of my children mentioned it in passing. He said that the rod that opened the Red Sea for the children of Israel is also the same rod that closed it against the Egyptians. Exodus 14, from verse 23 to 28. Exodus 14. Thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone, he says, the recurrent crisis in your family is over now. <laughs> Exodus 14, from verse 23 to 28. After the children of Israel had passed through the Red Sea, on dry ground and Pharaoh and his hosts followed them the Lord told Moses turn in the other direction raise your hand again and the sea closed on the enemies in 2nd King chapter 4 from verse 1 to 7 2nd Kings chapter 4 from verse 1 to 7 when the creditors came to the widow of one of the prophets and they said, if we don't pay the amount you are owing us by tomorrow, we will sell your children. She cried to the man who had the mantle, Elisha. And you remember the story very well. In the morning, tremendous embarrassment was coming into the life of this widow. By the evening, the door had been shut against the embarrassment. In the name that's above every other name, anything that is causing you embarrassment, the fire of God will shut the door against it. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, when you move into the New Testament, from verse 1 to 8, Acts 3, 1 to 8, when Peter and John were going to the temple to pray, they saw this man who was born lame, by the beautiful temple begging for arms. And when he asked for arms, and Peter said to him, Look on us. Silver and gold are fine now, but I have something. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The lame man must have been seriously embarrassed. How? Sir, what, what, what kind of joke is this? If you have no money to give me, go. You see me here, lame from my mother's womb, and you say, get up and walk. If I can walk, will I be here? 
But then Peter grabbed his hand. And like I told some of my children not too long ago, the head is the citadel for anointing. When in Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4, Acts 2, 1 to 4, when the Holy Spirit came, it came as cloven tongues of fire, like one of my sons said, and sat on the head of those who were there. The fire landed on the head of Peter. But why the head is the citadel of the anointing, the hand is the conductor that will cause the anointing to flow from the source to where it is needed. When Peter grabbed that man by hand, the Bible says, his ankle bone received strength. Anointing flowed into that man. And the man who was feeling embarrassed before suddenly got up, found that ah, I can stand. He tried to see, can I really walk? I can walk. Can I jump? He found that he could jump. I can't reach all of you one by one. But I believe the Almighty God is asking me to stretch my hand to you one more time. And to all of you, particularly those of you who are here tonight, those of you in the overflow in the old arena, and those of you who are watching all over the world, as I stretch my hand to you, every form of embarrassment in your life will disappear. That lame man never begged again. And in the name that's above every other name, you will never beg again. Maybe you want to write down your prayer number three. Prayer number three. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, If there is any embarrassment coming my way, let your fire consume. If there is any embarrassment coming my way, let your fire consume. Uh, I can tell you, I can remind you, this thing happened a long time ago. Uh, there was a herbalist somewhere in Akure, very, very powerful herbalist, soldiers, top brass in the military, in the police, etc., etc., came to him for charms. And he had his habitation under a huge Iroko tree. And my son built his factory almost directly opposite that grove. Maybe he didn't know what was going on. And because anybody that that, he was so powerful when he kidnapped anybody and use them for rituals. Nobody could touch him. And so my son was producing his products and nobody was coming to buy because they were afraid to pass through the, the way where this man was uh, reigning. And I was visiting Akure and my son said, please, daddy, come and help me bless my factory. 
And then he told me the story. And I said, show me the grove. And he did. And I stretched my hand. And I commanded that the fire of God would consume this, the grove. Whether that day or the next, I cannot remember. But there was a thunderstorm. And the thunder struck the Roko tree, broke it to pieces, and that man fled because his magic met with power. Tonight, any evil tree in your village, in your town, will not be there when you get home. What can the rod do? Number four. By the time you read Exodus chapter 15. Mm. Thank you, Father. Lord asked me to tell somebody, your next miracle will be spectacular. He said it will be a miracle that cannot be hidden. <laughs> Exodus 15 from verse 22 to 26. Exodus 15, 22 to 26 tells you the story of what happened when the children of Israel got to a pool of water called Mara. And they couldn't drink the water because it was bitter. But God showed Moses a tree that was by the poolside. And he took a bit of the branch, threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. In 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 8 to 37, 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 8 to 37, the Bible tells us the story of the great woman of Shudan who became very hospitable to the man with the mantle, as a result of which she got a son at a time when she had lost hope that there will ever be a son. Ah, by the way, when that lady was testifying, the Lord spoke to me. Remember the lady who said that they said her husband uh, had no, no, that his palm count was low and that she herself could not ovulate. That's a terrible combination. As a result of which the doctor said that there would be no possibility of having children. And she showed you the first one that God had provided and the second one that is on the way. <laughs> First of all, sister, hear the word of the Lord. That baby that is in your womb will be special. <laughs> and then the Lord asked me to tell somebody who is in a similar situation tonight. Nine months from now, you'll be sharing your own testimony. Okay. Now, in Acts of the Apostles chapter, oh, we, we were talking about the woman of Shunem, the great woman of Shunem. She was hospitable to Elisha. Elisha was getting fed by him on a regular basis. He even built a house for Elisha, as a result of which she got a son. And then, not long after that, the son died. And the woman went to Elisha and said, Sir, 
I told you I had settled for a life without a son. I've said to God, a man can receive everything. You have blessed me. I'm influential. So, okay. But you, prophet, you came into my house. You changed my story. I was great before, then I became complete. Now, the child is dead. How come that instead of leaving me the way I was, contented with my problem, you brought joy into my life only to snatch it away from me? But the man with the man who followed her. And if you read the story very well, when Elisha raised that child back to life, the woman didn't say anything. She just went in, took her son, and came out. <laughs> I decree to you today that kind of joy that is unspeakable, that is full of glory, will come your way very soon. Maybe you want to write down your, your prayer number four. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let every source of sorrow in my life be consumed by fire. Let every source of sorrow in my life whether it is something physical, something marital, something material, something career-wise, something spiritual, let every source of sorrow in my life be consumed by fire. Number five, what can the Lord do? The Lord can produce something out of nothing. Oh, thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell you a story. Because there is a prophecy attached to it. Several years ago, I think around 1970, seven or so. I was a games master at Okegwe Fetter Do Grammar School. And I led my boys and my girls, boys and girls, to Akure to have a competition with, the, with their own people there. And there I met they are own games master, and uh, you know, we were both uh, boasting. My children will defeat yours, my children will wipe out your own children, etc., etc. So, somehow, we became rather acquainted. Years passed, I came to the University of Lagos. I've not seen him after that game at all. And I was in my final year of my master's. One day I was on the campus and suddenly I saw this man passing by. Ah, long time no see, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then he said, What are you doing here? I'm doing my master's. I said, I see. Where are you? He said, I'm in the Federal Ministry of Education. I said, oh, You people. I applied for a scholarship. You, you didn't even have the decency of inviting me for an interview. If you are not going to give me, that's no problem. But you should have invited him. He said he didn't invite you. I said, no. He said, but we, we were even looking for somebody for mathematics. I said, I got no invitation, nothing. He said, when I get back, I will see what I can do. To cut a long story short, he went back, 
And the next thing I got was, I got a scholarship. And it was backdated to the very beginning of my course. So when I finished, they paid me for two years, and that's the money I used to build my first house. The Lord asked me to tell you that story because he said there's someone here, an acquaintance that you have not seen for a long time is going to show up. And it's going to turn the tide for you. Uh, if you are the one, let me hear you shout hallelujah. The rod of fire can produce something out of nothing. Exodus chapter 17 from verse 1 to 7. Exodus 17 from verse 1 to 7. The children of Israel were thirsty. They cried. And Moses cried unto God. And God showed Moses a rock. And told him, go and strike the rock. And water will come out. Everybody knows that a rock has no water hidden inside it. But when the rod of fire hit the rock, out of nowhere, water began to gush out. In Second Kings chapter 4, from verse 42 to 44, Second Kings chapter 4, from verse 42 to 44, Somebody brought some food to Elisha and he told his servant, hey, prepare the food for all the sons of the prophets. And the, the man says, sir, do you know how many of us? The food they brought to you is probably for you alone. How can this food feed everybody? But the man with the man who said, just do what I have said, and the people will eat, and they will have leftover. From today onward, not enough is something you will never say again. But when you move into the New Testament, you will see something even more significant. When you read Acts of the Apostle chapter 19 from verse 11 to 12, Acts of the Apostle chapter 19 from verse 11 to 12. Oh, thank you, Father. Are you ready to act by faith tonight? I didn't hear your yes. <laughs> Again, God asked me to tell you a story. Somehow I knew that this night is going to be different. It's a story I told some of my children not too long ago. It was the first time I visited Zambia. And they, they fed me. But somehow the food I ate they didn't quite agree with my stomach. So I began to go to the toilet in the night. I think it was about the 24th time of going to the toilet. And suddenly I remembered that it is written, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. There's nobody to lay hands on me but uh, he didn't say who the sick will be. I am the one who is sick now. So I laid my hand on my own head. And I said, Adeboye, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, be healed. And the stooling stopped. Stand on your feet. If you can stand at all, you must stand now. 
you're going to lay your hands on your own head and please pray as if you are angry and mention your name and say Adeboye in the mighty name of Jesus be healed now open your mouth and pray In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I have to join you for this next one. Because the Lord said, you lay that hand on your head and decree. And say, head, I decree. You will never refuse a miracle. Go ahead, decree. Head, I decree to you in the mighty name of Jesus, you will never refuse a miracle. You will never refuse a divine blessing. I decree in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. <laughs> In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. <laughs> you will find me laughing. You wonder why I'm laughing. Please be careful of the fellow in front of you because God asks you to do something now. And make sure you don't punch the fellow in front of you. The Lord asked me to tell you to stretch forth your hand by force and say in the mighty name of Jesus every door shut against me open now go ahead in the mighty name of Jesus every door shut against me Open now. Open now. Open now. In the mighty name of Jesus, every door shut against me. Open now. Thank you, Father. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Let me hear you shout a really big hallelujah. And put your hands together for the Almighty God. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you. All right, you please be seated. Now, I, I was talking about what can happen. when uh, you have the rod of fire that you can produce something out of nothing. In Acts chapter 19 from verse 11 to 12 Acts 19 11 to 12 when the Bible says Thank you, Lord. I think somebody is receiving a miracle somewhere there. It's, that's why they're screaming. In Acts chapter 19, from verse 11 to 12, the Bible says God performs special miracles 
by the hand of Paul. So that from his body, anchor chiefs and aprons were taken to the sick. And the diseases departed from them, and evil spirits went out of them. We're talking about making something out of nothing. See, when you remember in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, the Paul himself called himself the chief of sinners. That the Almighty God can take the chief of sinners and turn him to somebody whose handkerchief can begin to heal the sick. That tells you that the rod of fire called Jesus Christ can make something out of nothing. Anytime I hear some testimonies, I tremble. Particularly when it has to do with handkerchiefs that are blessed. Because I know who I was. I've told you before I was so bad that if I were Jesus Christ, I won't save a boy. But he saved my soul. And in his infinite mercy, he started doing some of these unbelievable miracles. That's why I laughed when I heard that one joke I said, I was faking miracles. There's no need to fake miracles. Some of the miracles God has been performing in our midst, they are difficult to believe. I remember one when I was praying in my prayer room last night. God reminded me of one. Her friend had cancer of the breast. They took her to the hospital cut off one, that one breast so that she won't die. And this lady went to visit her friend in the hospital, sad to see her in that situation, and then took one anointed handkerchief that we had prayed over and laid it on the wound and prayed. Two weeks later, a new breast had grown. How can anybody fake that? Are you, are you going to pretend that that happened if it did it? And in the name of the one who sent me, all of you who are genuinely connected to me as your daddy, you will do greater miracles. Now, what can the rod of fire do? Some of my children have mentioned it. They said, the rod of fire is a symbol of authority. One said, it's a symbol of power, etc., etc. Very good information. But you see, when we're talking about the rod, The best way to explain it to you is what happens when a king has been enthroned. One day, the governor will come and hand over to him what they call the staff of office. A symbol that here comes a king. 
The rod of fire gives you dominion. It is a combination of authority and power. Psalm 45 verse 6. Psalm 45 verse 6 gives us another name for the rod. Because it's scepter. He said, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of uprightness. Another one of my children quoted Psalm 110 from verse 1 to 2. Psalm 110 from verse 1 to 2. The Lord says to my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I've made your enemies your footstool. Then he went on to say, The Lord shall send forth from Zion. Out of Zion will come the power that will enable you to rule in the midst of your enemies. Amen. You remember one of us said it. And one of the boys, that's why I said, this, this, these children are wonderful. They've preached almost all my sermon. One of them referred to Psalm 23 from verse 4 to 5. Psalm 23 from verse 4 to 5. When we are said, oh, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil. And by the way, oh, there was a song rendered by the mass choir about why I am not afraid. Uh, that was a beautiful song, directly from heaven. Glory be to God. And that young man was saying the rod, the scepter, the symbol of authority, the symbol of power, will allow you to walk through the valley of the shadow of death and you have nothing to fear. And you rule in the midst of your enemy because the Lord will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I want to decree to somebody that from now on, in the very presence of your enemies, you will enjoy. And I want to remind you of a story. Many of you know this story. The late Orimo Lucy of Ijebuibo, as the one who died several years ago. By the grace of God, was one of my children. God born again, God baptized in the Holy Spirit, etc., etc. And he decreed. Because where there is the, the word of the king, there is power. He said, no more idol worshipping in this town. At least as long as I am king. <laughs> and the Google worshipper said, what's wrong with him? We've been doing this before your father was born. Not to talk of yourself. And he said, okay. He said, we will celebrate. And he said, well, we we'll wait and see. Two weeks to the celebration, the high priest of Igugu Festival died. Now, you can't celebrate without the high priest. So quickly, they appointed another high priest. I think five days after he got to the, the stool, he died. 
And they said, ah, we still have two weeks. So they appointed another one. And five days or so later, that one died. So they decided, ah, we still have about a week. And they called on the next fellow. We want to make you happy. He said, no way. They said, why not? He said, the God of Urimolusi will kill me. I decree today, the God I serve, the God of all gods, the consuming fire, we deal with all your enemies. You want to write down your prayer number five. This is a true story. It's a story you can check. That's why I mention names and place. Prayer number five. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, empower me to rule in the midst of my enemies. Empower me to rule in the midst of my enemies. Let me close because of time. If the Lord wants, we can pick up from there next month before we go on to refueling. If not, the Holy Spirit will teach whatever remains. And all my children ask a question. How do I get to have the rod of fire? Ordinary hands cannot hold the rod of fire. The hands that we hold the rod of fire must be a changed hand, a transformed hand. Like one of them mentioned, it has to be a hand that has surrendered all. In Exodus chapter 4, from verse 1 to 8, which one of them mentioned? Exodus 4, from verse 1 to 8. When God asked Moses, what is it? What is that in your hand? And he said, the rod. The rod in the hand of a shepherd is what makes the shepherd a shepherd. So when God said, throw it down, God was saying, surrender all. And when he threw down the rod and the rod became a serpent, the Bible said he fled from it. You want to be able to have the rod of fire manifesting regularly in your life? You must not only surrender your life to Jesus Christ, you must forsake your previous ways. The Bible made it clear if you really come to Jesus Christ, the one who is the baptizer in fire, all things must pass away. Everything must become new. Elisha could not have picked up the mantra of Elijah if in 1 Kings chapter 19, from verse 19, to the end, First King chapter 19, from verse 19 to the end. If Elisha had not forsaken all to follow Elijah, we could not be reading about Paul 
performing special miracles through the anointing of God if he had not before said all things that were gained to me I surrender all that I might know Christ and the power of his resurrection Isaiah 52 verse 11 Isaiah 52 verse 11 says be clean ye that bear the vessel of God touch no unclean thing your purity your holiness must be on a serious level There are certain things that other people can do, you can't do them. If you want to carry the rod of fire. I'll tell you just one more story, and I close. Some of you have heard it before. I was a lecturer at the University of Lagos, and I because of my position, uh, there were letterheaded papers on my desk, uh, envelopes with the, I mean, university envelopes. They were there too. And I wrote a letter that I personal letter has nothing to do with the university at all. When I finish, I stretch my hand to take one of the envelopes so I can use it to post my letter. And the Almighty God spoke to me loud and clear. No, you can't take that envelope. That envelope is for official matters, not for your private letter. I said, ah, ah Lord, <laughs> envelope, envelope. How much is an envelope? God spoke to me and said, my son, if you know that an envelope is that cheap, go and buy yours. How many of you would like to raise the dead? How many of you would like to lay your hands on the sick and they recover all the time? You better look at your hand very well and tell your hands from now on you cannot touch the unclean. Anointing is good. Anointing is wonderful. But anointing is a double-edged sword. You abuse it, it can kill you. When you say, let the fire fall, you better be sure you are the kind of fire, are the kind of person that the fire of God will purify and not destroy. One of my children who spoke mentioned the fact that Shedra, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fairy furnace, but they couldn't burn because they themselves <laughs> were fire. It was fire walking into fire. Those who threw them in were slain by the heat of the furnace. I have prayed. And I'm sure God had heard me that all of you, my children, you'll be greater than I. <laughs> but I've told you again and again, holiness is the master key. You must be holy. 
Not only must you be powerful, you must be holy. The word of God says, because you love righteousness and hate iniquity. Therefore, God, even your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. My beloved children, the fire of God is already falling tonight. God is already here with us. Even the dead can feel his presence here tonight. And the fire is going to fall even more. But you better be sure you are right with God. Because the fire of God does not mix with sin. So, those of you who have not yet given your life to Jesus, the blood that can cleanse you from all sins is available. If you come to Jesus Christ tonight, His blood will wash you clean from all your sins and everything can become new for you. So, if you are here, and you have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to count from 1 to 10. Before I say 10, make sure you are already standing before the altar here, and then I can pray for your salvation. And then, when we ask the fire to fall, the fire will only do you good and not evil. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, you better begin to come now as I begin to count. One. Two. Three. If you claim that you are born again, but you are still living in sin, you better come now. You better come now before it is too late. Because when you are truly born again, you will hate sin. Come for genuine salvation. Four. Now, those of you who are coming from afar off, you have to move a little faster. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Thank you. Now those of you on the way, just keep coming. Make sure you get there before I finish praying. And those of you already in front, cry to the Almighty God. Ask Him to have mercy on you. Ask Him to please wash you in His blood. Ask Him to please make you one of His children. Pray. Those of you on the way, pray the same prayer. Promise Him that you will serve Him from now on but that it should please save your soul and wash away all your sins with his blood. And the rest of us, please, let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them that the Almighty God will have mercy on them, that he will save their souls, 
He will wash them clean with his blood. And those of you who are still on the way, hurry up, because within the next two minutes, I'll be praying for salvation. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My Father, my God, I want to bless your holy name. I want to thank you for these people who have responded to your word. Thank you for your word. And thank you because these people have come. Lord, please have mercy on them. Let your blood wash away their sins. Save their souls, O oh Lord. Write their names in the book of life. And please, Lord God Almighty, from now on, whenever they cry unto you, answer them by fire. And don't let them ever backslide. Thank you, Almighty God, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, those of you who are still on the way, keep coming. You are not late yet. Um, the counselors will please move around them, attend to these people, give them the material they need to give you the information I need. Those of you who have come forward, I promise you by the special grace of God from now on, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. And we'll do that very quickly before we proceed further. God bless you. Thank you, Father.
you councillors. Uh, thank you, band. You want to add to your prayer list prayer point number six. And that's you are going to ask the Almighty God to please just send down your fire. Just send down your fire. In every facet of my life, send down your fire. And then number seven would then be your private prayer point. Any special prayer that you want to present to God, make it number seven. The altar is open and you can come. We are very early today, so you have plenty of time to pray. Let's come and talk to the Almighty God. Let us begin to bring our prayers to a close. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Almighty God will answer your prayers. the rods of your enemies will be consumed by fire. Where there's no way before, before the sun rises, there will be a way for you.
God will shut the door against your pursuers. They will never catch up with you. Everything that could cause you sorrow, the Almighty God will uproot them. Out of nothing, God will produce something for you. He will give you absolute victory. You will become a blessing. God will use you to perform miracles. Your handkerchiefs will heal the sick. Your dress will raise the dead. You will be a special vessel unto honor in God's hand. In every area where you need help, God will send help to you. This day marks a new beginning for you. The kind of joy that the Bible calls unspeakable. God will give to you in abundance. It shall be well with you. You will never forget tonight. The tide will turn for you tonight. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And God bless you. You can go back to your seat rejoicing. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Well, let's very quickly get back to our seats and then take our Thanksgiving offering and appreciate God for what He has done in our lives. From this moment onward, whatever you touch will prosper. And then, as soon as we have taken our Thanksgiving offering, we dance to the nearest basket and drop it, and then rejoice with uh, your brothers and sisters. As we shake hands today, fire begets fire, and the fire in your life will become bigger. Just as iron sharpeneth iron. From this moment onward, anyone you shake hands with will receive a miracle. Okay, so over to you, band. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. The angels are singing. Hosanna in
father is the greatest. My father is the greatest. He's greater than the greatest. My father is the greatest. My father is the greatest. My father is the greatest. He's greater than the greatest. My father is the greatest. My father is the greatest. My father is the greatest. He's greater than the greatest. My father is the greatest. My father is the greatest. My father is the greatest. He's greater than the greatest. My father is the greatest. My father is the strongest. My father is the strongest. He's stronger than the strongest. My father is the strongest. My father is the strongest. My father is the strongest. He's stronger than the strongest. My father is the strongest. My father is the strongest. My father is the strongest. He's stronger than the strongest. My father is the strongest. My father is the strongest. My father is the strongest. He's stronger than the strongest. My father is the strongest. My father is the oldest. My father is the oldest. He's older than the oldest. My father is the oldest. My father is the oldest. My father is the Almighty God will accept your offering. He will take you to himself by fire. You will never know poverty again. You will never beg. You will always have more than sufficient. There will be mighty breakthroughs your way. Everywhere you go now, you will find favor with God. You will find favor with men. You will live here today and go and shine. Go in peace. The Almighty God will go with you. When the enemy see you coming, they will run. Your joy shall overflow. Before I see you next time, you will have series of miracles. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let me hear another hallelujah by fire. Jesus. Our Lord is one. There is no one greater. There is no one greater. There is no one greater than Jehovah Lord is my Lord. Yeah. 